Hello, Johnny here from the PE Tutor. Welcome to today's mini lesson from the Level 3 BTEC Sport Unit 1 email course. Today, we're looking at topic A1 in the skeletal system. And in, well, specifically, we're going to be looking at the functions of the skeleton as well as the process of bone growth. So we'll start off with the functions of the skeleton. And there are six. And the acronym that we use to remember this is SLAPS, S-L-A-P-P-S. -P -P so the S and the L stand for storage and leverage. A and the P stand for attachment and protection, and then the final P and the S stands for production and storage. So support, what do we mean by support? Well, the bones form a framework around which and upon which our muscles and living tissue can actually attach to or reside within. So without the skeleton, we wouldn't actually have the shape or the posture of our body. L stands for leverage. This is because Without our bones, we wouldn't actually be able to use muscular contractions to move. So where bones meet, that's called a joint. And if we apply a force to one so that it rotates about the other, we create a lever or, or pivots where we can now create movement because muscles are attached to our bones. And depending on how those muscles are attached, that can actually determine the quality of the lever that we actually have. So within our body, uh, different parts or different bones can produce more effective movement uh, based on how the attachments and how the lever systems are working. So A stands for attachment, um, which is where muscles are attached to our bones via, uh, via tendons. And as long as we have those tendons attached to that bone, when that muscle contracts or shortens, we can move a bone and we can create sporting actions such as running, jumping and throwing. Next, we have production. So production is within the bone marrow, inside of our bones, um, we, have, we have a substance called bone marrow. And in this, we actually produce or reproduce, we're constantly refreshing our supplies of red and white blood cells, which are essential for uh, transportation of oxygen, as well as uh, the fighting of disease, or, or, sorry, the fighting of disease, because white blood cells are there for our, our immunity and they help combat um, sort of viruses which might enter, which might enter our body. Uh, next, we have protection. So protection, uh, especially flat bones or irregular bones, uh, they're, they're, they're designed in a way to protect what's behind them. So, for example, we have our, our sternum or our, or our rib cage. Um, and what the, their main purpose is, is to protect the lungs or the heart, or those vital organs that reside behind them from external forces. Uh, so in sport, for example, if we were playing rugby and we get tackled and it's slightly high, uh, we have our bones or our skeletal system in place to make sure that the heart, the lungs, they're not, they're not you know, getting the full front of that force and becoming damaged in the process. Uh, lastly, then, we have storage. Now, 90% of our calcium is actually stored inside of our bones. And we actually use osteoclasts to sort of break down or break apart uh, the bones when we require calcium uh, to, to ensure essential chemical processes such as muscular contractions can take place around the body. So slaps, storage, leverage, attachment, production, protection, and storage, uh, the six functions of the skeleton. So secondly, we're going to look at the process of bone growth or bone remodeling, as it's also called. And there's two primary things which work um, in order to bring this process about, and they're osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Now, for the B in osteoblasts, I want you to think of build-up. So the osteoblasts bring new minerals, new, uh, new chemicals or, or calcium to the bone site and help create new bone. Okay, So this process of ossification, where a bone starts out as, or new bone starts out as cartilage, and as, as we add to this with the, with the nutrients and the minerals, over time, this begins to solidify and it turns into uh, the bone that, that, we, that we know. Osteoclasts, on the other hand, are there to break away old bone, uh, as well as break off or chip away little chunks uh, and then deposit this, these minerals or, or, or calcium which is stored inside of the bone to take it off the bone and then deliver it around the body. Obviously, we would prefer or we would like to have uh, more osteoblasts than osteoclasts, uh, so that our bone density isn't being negatively affected. So as long as we are exercising, we're putting regular shock through our bone, we're eating correctly, osteoblast activity will stay high and bone density won't start to drop off and we won't start to suffer uh, easy breaks or fractures inside of our bones. So at the ends of our bones, we also have epiphyseal plates or growth plates. 
This is where the main growth occurs. And especially during childhood or adolescence, this is where a lot of minerals are being deposited and osteoblast activity is very high. And if we were to actually look at a bone under, under an x-ray, we can actually see these, these layers or lines at the, at the extremities of, especially, especially long bones, we'll see these lines and it almost tells the story of this bone growth or bone remodeling as we just keep on adding to it. We just keep on adding or laying new minerals on top of each other, ossifying it, solidifying this bone until it reaches full size and these growth plates are no more. So... That's the function of the skeleton. We have the acronym SLAPS and the process of bone growth or bone remodeling, whereby we, we really rely on the actions of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. If you found that mini lesson useful, then hit the link below and you can find out how to get yourself enrolled on the free email courses that we provide. It's not just BTEC Sport. We do A-levels, GCSE, all sorts. So have a little look at that link and I hope to hear from or see you very soon.